We Christians, we committed to obey what the Bible teaches to us. We see that people are uh, worshipping other things as a part of God, but this is, you know, ignorance. So we refuse that one when we understand the gospel. You know, in the past, uh, the church was not uh, so arrogant, but now the Protestant church, it wants to increase its members. When they preach, they make the traditional leaders to feel ashamed. They say that you are, you know, demonic people. Because they are convinced that to follow tradition means something to, to go to the hill. You know, you have a car. Car is not God for you. you, are, you so trees and animals and whatever river, it's not God. We have to worship God. We have to use this for us, God created for us. Not only is that tacitly opposed to a lot of traditional beliefs about you know, how you should treat the landscape and how you should live your life, it's very vocally opposed to a lot of those things. They sing these really beautiful songs as they're harvesting, as they're working, and a lot of these church groups are sort of forbidden to use those. They're building churches on sacred landscapes. I've seen it be really incredibly disruptive to not only people's spiritual lives, but um, you know, relatedly to people's sort of working lives and community lives. The challenge, of course, is that uh, indigenous peoples um, have had this very unique worldview of the aliveness of the universe, and by and large, the monotheistic traditions, the Abrahamic traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam have suggested that God is above the world, a transcendent God, a creator God that orders and has a presence, but is lifted up out of the world. Now, removing God from nature, certainly many people would say has desacralized the world and therefore opened it up for consumption and for abuse and for exploitation. There's some definite truth to that. You know, we in our lives are all about maximization. The maximization of profit is, is seen as this huge good, whereas it's not really a case there. No one's out to maximize. That's not really a concept. People are out to, to continue, you know, to sustain. Uh, we can say it is just uh, two different worlds, and we are depending on uh, nature here, and uh, their people are depending on scientific funds. Through science, the industrial world has developed technologies to maximize agricultural output. These pesticides and fertilizers were first used in the Green Revolution of the 1950s and 60s. Supermarket, symbol of the high standard of living today. These products come from farms and ranches despite distance and season. They are the result of a miraculous agriculture. Tremendous advances on the farm and in the marketing system have created this miracle. The miracle whereby agriculture has advanced more in the space of a single lifetime than world agriculture had in more than 7,000 years. Today, agriculture is going far beyond nature to produce new miracles for an even better, more abundant life. I wasn't there for the uh, first Green Revolution, but uh, some of my colleagues at the Rockefeller Foundation were. And the story they tell is that the world was really concerned that Asia was going to hit a population bubble and there was no foreseeable way to feed the population. And so there was really a concerted effort, sort of like a space program type, you know, grand challenge to develop ways to allow Asia to feed itself. And uh, those focused really on two principal crops, wheat, and then on rice. These crops really took off and really solved for the time being that population problem. Fed a massive amount of people on a small amount of land. That was what it was all about, was maximizing yield. And it worked, they maximized the yield. But the problem is that, A, you have to have a very, very small genetic base in order to find that, that sweet spot, as it were. Um, and B, 
if conditions aren't perfect for it, then it doesn't do very well. If there's variable conditions, some years it can fail entirely. So it set up a system where if you had all the inputs and you could set it up exactly right, you would maximize your yields and you would do great, but if there was any other circumstances, then you were worse off than you started. Despite the detrimental effects of the first green revolution worldwide, and especially 